Dire team ban. Radiant team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Dire team pick. Welcome back, everybody. It is game number four now between Monkey Business and CIS Rejects, who finally got themselves a point on the board. It is now two to one in favor of Monkey Business, but at least CIS Rejects have the momentum. I honestly don't think that exists anymore. Yeah, you don't think so? Like, I was opponent on selling that two years ago when best of threes I felt that uh -huh. drafting was so I don't know Reserve not time. important like not as important as it is now mm -hmm. it was just more about play and having that okay. behind you with uh, with the play I was like right well you win the first game lose the second game I'm pretty sure that win the second game the series but now yeah. it's like so many little nuances and pokes and jabs during the draft that the momentum just completely starts again. You know, you start from zero completely. Yeah, I could see where you're going with that. Uh, I've heard a couple different pro players say that the draft is more now mm -hmm. than it used to be. Um, and even just the last couple of patches been so much more. Well, I guess I shouldn't exaggerate and say momentum goes back to zero. Obviously, you still got, you know, adrenaline pumping and do have some more wind in your sails than you do win previous Yeah, games, but it means but... less than it used to. Yeah. All right, so CIS rejects. We took a very, very long time to figure out that they will, in fact, ban away the Leshrac, and now they're taking so much time with their second pick that they're losing a lot of their reserve. Uh, Monkey Business went straight up for the first pick. Lena, not terribly surprising. Very versatile hero and really valuable as a as a first pick. Earthshaker and Disruptor for CIS rejects. Uh, an early Disruptor pick is kind of weird, but. Monkey business. Not really going to take too much time to address that one and instantly go for the Shadow Fiend on the Radiant side. Yeah, Radiant SF, and this was first phase banned by CIS Rejects previously, right? They didn't want to, didn't want to let them have it. Mm -hmm. And Ten Alina now remaining. switching into the. It'll be safe than Lena, but more likely than not, it's going to be crit Five over on that again. Remaining. Honey Wisp is still there, but. Not sure if that's uh, a great option against the Disruptor. You know, I, th I think he's like 50 against the Tiny Wisp. I like that, whereas Winter Wyvern is a little bit stronger stats-wise. That combo. Wyvern is still in the pool, by the way. 
And I feel that that hero is not super underrated, but maybe should be towards first phase pick. Five seconds remaining. Because of how uh, how diverse he is, I guess he's Reserve all time. he's always a support hero, so he's not like Lena that can switch roles, but you can do a lot of things Radiant with Lavin. Queen of Pain gonna be um, and out by Monkey Business, Wisp, and out by CIS Rejects, now the TA. Some of the best laners versus SF, and some of the best mids left in the pool. Now, in fact, there's most of the mids are gone. Uh, CIS Rejects, I guess, very likely to take Wind Ranger, I would assume. Ten seconds Let's have the Storm. Remaining. Five seconds remaining. I guess you could ban out one or the other here. Reserve time. I'm not sure. Options are super limited. I was even bringing it up, uh, bringing up Puck the other day, just because of how many mid laners I see banned out in the draft nowadays. <laughs> Thought S4 run that. So Wait, it, it, it was the game again that you were casting, right? Where they had Dying Alliance Puck, S4 Puck. Yeah. And it just profit. Yeah, profit. Uh the stuff, but it's just really, really yeah, it's all it's just kind of like the TI3 TI draft. I mean, I think Puck is still a hero, it's just that she's so low on the tier list compared to you know, for Assassin who farms incredibly well. And it, it is down to that, really, you know, farming speed and efficiency. You want a mid laner who can flash farm at least you know, in the game, either bridge the gap between Five self and her opponent remaining. if she's behind from laning phase, or create that gap to get ahead by you know. 50 Hundred two thousand net worth by time. by sort of twelve thirteen minutes. Definitely can do. You know, twelve minute mech is what you, you aim for. But we've seen a shift away Radiant from mech. Team pick. Five five was sort of the era of SF mech tank up. You go in brute force towers and you have your team behind you. Yeah. From NA teams now, and I was talking to Clairvoyance with um, him when we were casting a game the other day. It's more about going sort of you know Sanjay Nyasha Shadow Blade BKB rush going for a hand of Midas if you have time. Yeah. And going straight into like the physical damage, and then Helm of the Dominator Satanic later on. Especially if your SF is your hardest carry, mm -hmm. you really need to start going for those stats early. Um, Spirit Breaker now for Monkey Business in response to the Wind Ranger CIS rejects. Um, will be able to put a lot of pressure on SF in the early laning phase with the Wind Ranger and the Earthshaker. That's a lot of potential roaming, whether it's off lane or support, whatever. SF's going to be feeling that um, early laning phase pressure, which Spirit Breaker might be able to make up for. See whether or not he is... he should be in off lane. Remaining. As the Lena should already be taking that um, hard Five four position. Remaining. Yeah, highly likely. All three heroes can switch up, but the scenario you set up there is the more likely one, I feel. That's Shaker though. He's got that Fisher against the Spirit Breaker, so if he gets vision of him, that charge isn't going to come through towards the middle lane. Mm -hmm. Dropped with a glimpse as well. It's going to be a hard Spirit Breaker game, honestly. Ten seconds remaining. Maybe they. Mm, <laughs> maybe they do put him in support. Radiant team pick. So there's three heroes already. Wind Ranger, Disruptor, Earth Shaker that really do stop that charge coming in. You rely fully on putting him in the offlane role. We've seen Monkey Business, they do need Moon Meander to get some far. Like, he needs to kind of do well in his lane. He doesn't need to win it or crush it. But he cannot be shut down like he was in the previous game as that clockwork. Dire well, they get themselves a dazzle. It's looking more and more likely that be like you said. Great defensive support up against these guys. The Weave against Bristleback. The Cool Spray is really negated heavily by that. Bonus armor you get from. Ten and seconds. you've got the negative armor to turn it back around from Shadow Fiend, physical damage galore, Lena with the nukes. Five so far, well rounded. They've got initiation power, they've got sustain. Reaction plays here from Monkey Business are pretty high. You know, charge reaction, TP grave, Lena can come in as well. I don't know what they need to round out the draft, though. Synergy so far with charge, light strike array, requiem, and things like that. Miracle hero wise, I don't even know if anti mage fits here. Ten seconds remaining. Against the Bristleback, who can 
out tank the damage, Wind Ranger with a and Static Storm Disruptor. They've got ways of locking him down and do business. I don't know if they can secure the Reserve farm time, time for. Okay, they're back out the husk guy, yeah. That's a pretty sound ban. Even with the Wind Ranger out there with Focus Fire and the Core Sprays, Scarf of Miracle could have been pretty ridiculous. Now it's either Goretz or Plain Earth Shake. Or. What? No more offlaners. Apart from like the Centaur they had before. So yeah, they're looking at Goretz or Plain Earth Shaker. And Vanscore Hero to be fifth picked. Silencer? Not really gonna work, because Vanscore usually picks that disruptor. Oh, I guess it's the. Yeah, they've already got hero. the disruptor. Which I guess. Is, uh. Bad. I like it. The burst damage comes in. Good control. Fast medallion and solar crest. Yeah, fast medallion for a dire side with bristleback already in the pool. Pl uh, plus, you already have the wind ranger focus fire as well. Roshan could be very easy for CIS rejects to take. Radiant team pick. Do you think it's going to be a miracle SF or? Okay, risking. Where on earth is this gonna go? So is that offlane bristleback then? And Earthshaker disruptor supports Wind Ranger mid risking safe lane. Okay, I'll see how they actually set things up here. But monkey business, I think Miracle Shadow Fiend mid. Ember Spirit pick here from No Tail is probably what they would have fallen back on if it wasn't a risking final pick. Five seconds because remaining. You get the damage out, but Phantom Lancer. Okay, no tail shadow pin. No, no tail phantom. Even until that happens, kind of up in the air. Yeah. That's. Of course, the moon will be the off lane spirit breaker. See how he does. See how he does. It's gonna be rough. I always side with a phantom lancer. Pretty much always. Fusel blade against bristle and wraith king. Yeah, I mean, honestly, both of these strength carries are just get destroyed once their mana is completely gone. Wind Ranger, um, I mean, she's got the what? The one thing they do have for them is a lots of initiation, right? Earthshaker, Wind Ranger may pick up a blink dagger. Um, you also have the um, potential for Wraith King to go for the blink dagger builds, which we saw from last game: blink dagger, blade mail, etc., etc. So there's a lot of potential here for um Sorry, our, 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 I was trying to fix this earlier, but our overlays were slightly messed up for There we go. That's all better. It's all better now. Now you can see the KDA. Alright, so what's the plan here for the landing phase though? Monkey business are gonna start out with an aggro try. against Wraith King Disruptor Earthshaker. This would keep the a lot of pressure off of the SF when they run the aggro time. I kind of like this idea just because I think they can win it. They did this the other day. It felt super weird. But yeah, when you put it that way, it does draw a lot of attention away from Miracle. And I'm pretty sure it was against an Earthshaker as well. I can't remember what the other components were, but... I know Monkey Business had like Ember Dazzle plus one against an Earthshaker plus whatever it was. Block out, but they do have the rest of the team coming in for the side. And this means it's actually going to play against them as Iceberg immediately gets stunned up. Artez goes back. He knows he's kind of done for here. Crit is going to land the Light Strike array and he will be right clicked down oh. for the first blood. Oh, no, the Miss Race. How'd he get it? Oh, God. They're not going to get it. 25 HP. Wraith King gets out. Oh, wow. Um. Salve is popped, but who, who got bounty runes there? Bristol and Lena. It's, it's honestly not that bad. Like, First Blood is less meaningful than it used to be. The gold and XP spread you actually get across the board isn't that massive. Mm. Killing the Wraith King, like, he's got a TV back to base. He has no regen. Yeah. He's already been crushed massively here. The big thing is, though, I thought Miracle might go for Necromastery first to try and get the last hit because you get yourself a ton of souls to mm -hmm. start things off. 
pulse souls as soon as you kill a hero, and that wins you the lane almost against the Wind Ranger. Going for the raise and missing it. Yeah, that that last raise really cost him quite a bit. He could have a bottle already. Top lane, they will get first blood. Wraith King comes back and immediately gets dumped on. So he's dead now. Still, I, I want to watch this matchup just because I want to see how the SF is going to do against this Wind Ranger after the, the kind of wonky start. Because he's doing really well for himself so far. With the raise first, he's gotten 7 and 1. He's out of mana now, but he just needs one more CS and he'll have the bottle. But. He gets caught here. Fisher block. Oh, not quite enough. Iceberg. He doesn't have enough damage out from the power shot to finish him off. So, as bottle. Yeah, the bottle will come in now as well as that shared tango. Is it going to be fast enough to get second rune though? I don't think so. No one's defending top rune. Merkel is low, but I. Oh, oh, light strike away. Lands on advance core. The stun turned around onto crit, oh, but God. they're going to go for this kill on crit, and they probably will be able to get it. No, they're I not. I'll say ready again, but. Ooh, yeah, so they get out. First blood. Moon, meanwhile, is battling out with Gorets here in this bottom lane. He's uh, a level two spirit breaker, level three bristleback. Getting some decent seventeen percent so far from what I've seen. And Miracle's crushing this under the tower. Misses only one last hit from a one and a half wave. Dory's got raises to help himself out, but still. Oh, this is actually really important. Um, I, the courier was at the bottom lane. He took the bottle, and this means it's going to stall up the Wind Ranger quite significantly. But Gorz can make up for that if he gets a kill on Miracle somehow with this haste rune. I don't know. Top lane, Fly in some trouble here. Does have the shell grave so it should be okay oh, my SF God, yeah he runs right into Goretz Goretz immediately starts going in we'll be able to get this kill there's no save Flies just uh, a bit too late and there's certainly no turnaround kill on Goretz so this will actually Goretz will still be ahead of Moon experience uh, because he got that kill so there's not even anything gained at the bottom lane for this Breaker versus Bristleback lane. Bristleback should win this pretty handily, right? Like, unless you get godlike bashes out from the RNG. Yeah, I, I, I'm not quite so sure because Spirit Breaker has really naturally high armor and he goes for the early magic wand, so there's not much damage being dealt by the Quill Spray because of the armor. I mean, yeah, there's no way you win. There's no way you get a kill. But. 17%, yeah. And that, I, that I think it's two, not bad for the Spirit Breaker. I, two bashes in a row. Yeah. But I mean, the, the Spirit uh, the Bristleback should be able to out farm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Out farm, he, I don't think he'll, he'll be able to push the Spirit Breaker entirely out of lane, but still. Top lane. Lance goes out. Artez kind of trapped in the trees here. Doppelganger, they're just going full. Oh, oh what a shadow wave. Crap. Nice control there from Big Daddy No Tail surrounding that Wraith King and Illusions. And Fly does comply with a nice Shadow Wave. Level 2 Shadow Wave. Insane damage. How, how much HP does Wraith King have? 700? 720? Like 660. Oh, he's not even that. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't have any stat items. He's died three different True. times, too. Miracle? Kill for Iceberg. Pops a regen. Shackle Shot latches. Miracle allows it. Just runs right in there. Into the trees and does end up going down. Moon bumping back Gorets once again. Oh, that's a, that's a great thing, actually. The fact that he's against the Bristleback means that he's getting the stick charges, which allows him to spam charge. Yeah, he routinely is just charging into him every single time because he got so much extra magic to use, so much extra mana. Uh, they're going for Artez again. Why? Oh, that a wave? Nah, nah. Oh, they've kind of overextended themselves a little bit, so they'll start backing up. They've got no, they've got no turn power here. I can fish it to block them off glimpse to try and defend the raking, but how much yes does he have? Seven and one? Oh Moon! What? Whoa, Moon! He dove in, he picked up his level six, and he gets the kill on the bristleback. That is huge. But yeah, you're right. Seven and one on the Wraith King. I was looking at this yes and I'm going, oh wow. I mean every like we talked about, the Dazzle Phantom Lancer combination is is really strong, but I've never seen it used so Offensively, before. 
Always want to fly, goes for the block off, hits two there, and Fly's forced to just turn around. Oh my god, what a shackle to go through the trees! Fly's now going to be able to turn around, though. Artez comes forward, gets the stun, but with Jump Forward now, all they need is really good Shadow Wave or another raise. No, Always want to fly, does barely manage to survive. Artez not as lucky, and a rack up another kill. Four deaths now for the Wraith King. He's going to have more deaths than CS at this point. <laughs> don't, don't look at it that way. No. Poor Artez. Like, Vanskor has 7 CS. Charge in. Goretz is not the target, though. He's the only one full HP. Everyone else from CISR drops super low in that fight. But Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Moon coming to challenge. Pop the W. Pop it. No! Bounty picked up by Goretz. I mean, look how many... He laid out three quills, and he just doesn't seem to put a dent in the Spirit Breaker. High armor and high HP. Yeah, now he's got double gauntlet and treads. There's just no way. And yeah. this right here, what Goetz is doing, is what he has to do. Because he knows he's died once, got one kill, 24 CS is good and all. But he needs items to function, right? The Bristleback can't yeah. just go in and do stuff. He needs treads, Vanguard, Sand and Yasha, AC. He has a progression he needs to follow. And he cannot be stopped in that progression, or else he becomes a non-factor in teamfight. He just becomes, you know, a meat shield, walking around not doing too much. Whereas the Spirit Breaker has charge and other strike. His job is to initiate. He doesn't care about items too much. Shackle mid miracles caught. The reaction's coming in. No, oh, they will have a shallow grave. So a quick retreat comes out. They know diving into miracle would be a very bad idea. Meanwhile, the top tower does get taken out. Uh, Big Daddy. He's low in levels right now because they're running an aggro tri lane, but he's got a high amount of net worth. 202. He's 39 and 20. He's second in the net worth board, right behind the SF. The fact that you're keeping up with the SF at this point in the game is uh, good enough, essentially. SF doesn't have stacks, though, does he, right? No. no. He's been clearing out medium camp every time he can when he's pushed the wave out, which is Shadow Fiend Radiant Psy. That's just what happens. But no one has been able to because of this aggressive tri lane stack caps for him. Bot lane moon is charging forward. Yeah, I mean, he just doesn't really care too much about this dual lane. Does he just keep on going? If he gets another strike onto Vanscore, he, he could kill him. Really could. Has another charge up and still has enough mana for the combination. He'll have an urn soon as well. A lot of incentive for him to pick up a kill. We've seen what Shadow is building. He's just going for the regular opener. Fred's Aquila wand. I mean, the wand sometimes people skip, but against Wind Ranger who's spamming out Shackle Shot and Power Shots. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Honestly. A one coming in so useful, and then in mid-game team fight, push back obviously. Uh... Why is he the extra damage needed? Gonna be oh, 17% starting things off right. Moon trying to get off the ultimate ahead of the stun, can't quite get it. Still though, putting pressure on the Wraith King to turn around though. Goretz is here, so will be forced back. Their dual lane is still potentially stronger than this tri lane. Black even tried to buy a ring of health from the secret shop. And then oh, he sold it. He? Yeah. Oh. But he's got 1500. I, I kind of want him to just buy treads now. Tread switching is so important on a, on a hero like Bristleback, especially when you've got Wand and Bottle. Oh, God. He gets off the stun, but he's still going to be right click down. Like, it, 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 right click one, oh, one more, more time. You can do it. I believe in you. Yeah, you got him. But, but Moon. He's fine. Ooh. He could even charge back onto Earthshaker or Iceberg here, actually. He's just going to TP back. TP's back. Fly. Can they catch him? Oh, they definitely got him. Fly is done for. Glimpse back right into the waiting arms of Iceberg. Shot through the heart. But who's to blame? I think that would be the Wind Ranger. Invisibility. Glad you picked that up so quickly. That <laughs> makes me smile. Uh. Crit. He's got Lakuna Blade. This really is not that easy. A fight, especially Charge coming through. Oh, the hit Artez. Bashed up. Not again. Bashed one more time. Again. You know what? Just <laughs> call him Bash Lord. Lucky hell. In a lane? A miracle. Yeah, three heroes around him, but that uh, Wind Ranger a bit too low, and now the charge is going to come in through the side. Oh, but it's not on the Wind Ranger. It's not always want to fly instead. What is he doing? Good God, man. He just doesn't stop. He pops the urn on the iceberg. Crits runs forward. Laguna Blade? Get it. Shackle shot. Now Crits dead. 
Danestud.moon. You're sticking around too long, my friend. That was way too aggressive by both of you. Dyer's structures are fortified. Artez has not hit level 6 yet, and he is running in. Moon charge away. No, he charges in. Always want to fly. Pops that ultimate. Now always want to fly. is going to be left for dead. It's Miracle. Long range race. Doesn't have it. Five seconds on cooldown. Moon will actually be able to survive. Heals across the board. Looks like everyone is good for now, but they want to get it. Artez will be able to get the stun. Fly. Another heal out. Half the shallow grave still. 76 charges. Shackle Go. shot. Shallow grave gets laid out now. Moon comes in from the side. Will be able to stun up with a charge. Iceberg. Power shot misses. He's going to die now as the lance comes in through the side. They've taken out the Earthshaker. Charges They've ready. got the Wind Ranger. And now Goritz is going to die as well. The charge slowed down by the lance. Bumped by the Spirit Breaker. And Big Daddy No Tails on a mega kill streak already. 10 to 4. Everyone on the Radiant has a magic wand or a magic stick. And it honestly is making the difference here. Everyone, I swear I keep looking at people, they've got 17 stick charges, 17 wand charges, whatever. And this is why CRS Rudex just cannot find a break. They're looking for kills. They're looking for that execution moment where they're like, right, we've got them. 17 stick charges, back to half HP. What are you going to do? Graved up, what are you going to do? Just not finding the openings. It's 12 minutes in, so much action, and I haven't taken a look at the network chart just yet, but 6k on both the PL and the SF. Next up is 4,500 on the Wind Ranger. And then immediately behind him by 10 gold is the Spirit Breaker, who's at the same marker. Do you know how long the Wraith King walked around in that middle fight waiting for level 6? There was one Radiant Creep actually running around in circles. Artez couldn't kill it because it was like 3 quarters HP. Uh huh. And in the end, he got level 6, didn't have mana for his ultimate. So he's like, screw it, I'm going to throw a stun then and run away. But he is super underleveled. Like, at the same level as Disruptor and Earthshaker level. Yeah. Speaking of underleveled, Goretz is going to remain a little underleveled and under farms because his stack mechanic taken away. Sentry Ward blocking that one out. More minutes. Now the SF has his mech, so teamfight potential the roof now for monkey business. The spirit breaker who's so damn big. What's he got? He's got Radiant's something coming. Bottom tower is under it's gonna go for the shadow blade. Not terribly surprising. And Moon, he'll find Vanscore here. Hello, charge up. Fisher will interrupt him. And Vanscore does have his ultimate. He'll be able to get it off, stopping Moon from being able to pop his own ultimate. Oh, now geez. the latch comes in from the side, but Big Daddy O'Tail, he's just going to go from one to another. Earthshaker, next up, Vanscore. He just surrounds him real quick, gets that kill. They're going to turn on the Iceberg. The charge is coming right through. Oh, They're going to be able to catch him. And Moon still has his ultimate, so the wind run's going to fade. And now they look for Artez, who does not have a TP scroll, and I believe Monkey Business know this. He's got his ulti, but uh, he's got 15 stick charges. Not yeah, even no, not even worth it. it. You just die two times in a row. Now the charge in the middle lane, don't tell me. Don't tell me it's going to be a wipe. Earthshaker's alive, Zangles with a Disruptor, but can they actually save Goretz from the 17% monster oh, right in the face? Raise one, raise two, what and it's another percent to bash. finish him off! Boon! I don't know how you do it! Good lord, buy a lottery ticket, go Charge. gamble, what is happening? One hit, 17%. Two hits, three hits, ah, uh, only one. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And then on top of all of this, look what Crit just picked up. 14 minutes support Yules on this Lena. Damn. I mean, 12 minute Yule Scepter on a mid Lena is good. I guess, you know, there's Tread Bot and stuff that come beforehand, but plus some amount of farm. Wait, whoa, hello? Yeah, Moon just casually comes to the side, whatever. I'm a cow. No big deal. <coughs> He's actually trying to survive with his Invis, but that's not going to happen. Now Fly's a bit overextended now. And he should die, Miracle. Not even gonna try. Daddy No Tail, though, comes. Jackal, not latching. Glimpse, also not really doing much there. Miracle threatening the ultimate on the side, waiting for his opportunity. Artez, gotta be careful here. He doesn't have a whole lot of mana, still a lot of charges. Miracle, when are you gonna let that one go? He's just making noise. Finally goes out, hits on three. Artez is down, but he's trapped. No, oh, maybe it's Miracle who's the one who's trapped. Inside with the Disruptor ultimate, Crit sitting on the side trying to get out some damage, but this is just a bad fight it looks like, but with the SF dying, everyone's low, and Big Daddy How No many? Tail, he'll be able to get one, a second one, Iceberg, no, he just barely lives, and it looks like Big Daddy No Tail 
He needs to back out here. Light Strike Array, Artez, Doppelganger. Oh my god, the power shot missed. Oh, they're all so low. Big Jenny, god. no tail. Don't do it, man. Moon, go in. Moon, go in. Is going ham, ultimate, earned, and a lance. Big Daddy No Tail finds yet another one. The tier two is gonna fall as well. It's 20 to seven, and this game. There's, there's one I big- mean, This is something I expect out of CISR, but monkey business are being full out aggression right now, and they're winning. Winning and winning and winning. I think there's one reason for this. There's uh -huh. this big glaring hole in the draft that uh, we haven't really touched on. We talked about how great Phantom Lancer is against uh -huh. the Waiting and the Bristleback. What do CIS Rejects have that's good against the Phantom Lancer? Let's check it with a blink. Yep. And that seems like pretty much it. So I really feel like the Rejects have to get this blink. Oberon's always want to fly, but ha how do you do this? Because yeah. Big Daddy has he's not died once. And I don't foresee him dying in the future unless he just you know goes in and kills himself pretty much. Yeah, exactly. The only reason he came close to dying earlier is just it was simple super, super aggro. Uh, but I, you're completely right. I mean, the only way to deal with the Phantom Lancer was they had to win their lanes early. They had to get, like, Blink Daggers initiating tools and just keep the Phantom Lancer down because once he gets to the point that he's at now, he's damn near impossible to stop. Beautiful play, BOTs. It's 17 minutes in. They know this Roshan's happening, right? Oh, They're just waiting for the PL. They're just going to walk in here, waltz in, and... As soon apart. as they're revealed, Moon, oh, TP out, everybody run, CIS rejects, the charge comes in, no one's escaping, Vanscore's gonna be caught, and almost dies instantly to the combination of the Spirit Breaker, thanks to that Shadow Blade. They're looking for more, and they'll have it. Crit is gonna be able to find, always wanna fly, no Blink Dagger for you, at least not for another 10 minutes at least. Goritz, TD away, charge, oh my god, he got hit! He got stunned, but still completed the TP. 15,000 network, 18 minutes in. This this is very monkey business, and they even get the Roshan to deal things up as well. All Thanks. right. Well well done by our Lurker Derp. That's woman. Dyer's bottom tower has That's fought. person. Did you, did you notice that, uh, that, that title? Bash God. I didn't read the full Be title. Beginning to feel like a Bash God. It's uh, starting lyrics of Rap God. Oh, yeah. The memes. 22 to 7, 18 minutes in, a 15,000 gold lead, 12,000 experience, monkey's business. I mean, it's all but over at this point in time, and they haven't even broken a base, but that's just how far ahead they are with this kind of draft. Moon's gonna be caught here. All right, here's the start. They're gonna be able to chain stun him pretty quickly and take him down, but they'll lose a lot of damage on their tier three. DD Shadow Fiend with Aegis Yasha. Yeah, he's dealing 300 damage a hit. Oh, oh no, the control from No Tail is just not quite there. Miracle doesn't care. He has an Aegis, he has a mech. Fight me if you dare, you old scepter. Oh no, Thank the you. ultimate iceberg! Oh wait, Miracle! He stopped it! He's like, no, nah, I don't need it! I'll just right click him down, it's all Gucci! Daddy No Tail glimpsed back. Oh, three man Fisher, but it's still not enough. Monkey Business are just rampaging through all of this. Gorat's trying to challenge Miracle, who's at half HP, but no thank you, you gotta back up! He walked into that. Oh, I just I walked into that. Yeah. I have no idea what that was, but now he's oh, gonna be you dead again. Defusal, not quite There's dead. Lance. They, they have no echo. No tailed Lance, Spirit. Oh, they don't get the shot. Wait, no, no, they got the shot. Didn't no, they? No, they didn't. It was Wraith by Blast. Oh, so. okay. Daddy Hotel still turning around the charge right through. Bumps back four. Vance Core's already dead. Goretz is gonna fall in a second here. There goes the reincarnation as well. Miracle, he's got an Aegis. He don't care at all. Partez is rapidly gonna be burned out of all of his mid. He backs in. Sneak Daddy Moon Tails, you've been controlled right Wait. now, but the Shadow Grave's still there. Iceberg's dead They're as well. Dead. That's it's everything. 27 to 8. They got one kill in exchange for like seven. And Goretz is coming back to look around to be the eighth. And GG is going to be called before that can happen. Always want to fly. Says it's over. And our series is done for three to one. Monkey business. It started out so close with that game number one. A 67 minute game with Miracle controlling everything with his 
Animage. Game two taken by a Big Daddy No Tail and Crit Wisp tiny combination. Game number three was where CISR were able to strike back, but still, Monkey Business came back even harder in game four, harder than game two. Yeah, and we were talking about it before the.